Welcome to Our People Speak, the online program that shares different aspects of our native cultures of interior Alaska. I'm Sharon McConnell, Executive Director of Danakanaga, and this show is centered on storytelling and how it helps our native people carry on our traditions and our ways of life here in Alaska interior area. And we're very happy to have with us as our guest who knows a lot about storytelling because he is one, Frank Yaska, who is the cultural programs manager for Tanana Chiefs Conference. And welcome, Frank. Thank you for having me. So before we start talking about storytelling, um, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself for our guests that are watching. Sure. Well, Doenta Kasaka Frank Yaska so Uza Kleira Hook Yadafke Sisni. Tanaka Hudo Takeach. In my English, my name is Frank, Frank Yaska. Meanwhile, in my language, I'm called Yadafkif, and I am learning my language. <clears throat> I am Khoikan Athabaskan from Huslia, Alaska. It's about 290 air miles north, northwest of here. And uh, Tiwa Pueblo from Isleta, New Mexico, uh, on my mom's side. Um, and uh, born here, raised most of my life here. Uh, been here since uh, 98, um, and I am Happy to be here. Thank you. Great. Can you just tell us in your own words, what do you think is, um, why is storytelling so important to our native people? Beautiful. In order for us as human beings need to know where we're going, we need to know where we've been. And storytelling is, uh, has, has always been a part of our traditional practices. And um, connecting, engaging, learning from one another, um, and, uh, and building towards a, a, a sustainable future. It's just a, a, a huge part of who we are as uh, Alaska Native people. And uh, it, uh, yeah, did I answer your question? Uh -huh. Cool. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself though? I mean, how did you learn to tell stories and what got you doing that? Because not everyone does that. Yes. Um, while I was a kid in Seattle, Washington, I got involved in theater arts but I never understood why. I just gravitated towards it naturally. And it wasn't until a couple of years ago that I've learned that it's in my DNA. Um, coming from a long line of storytellers, powerful storytellers, my grandmother would say um, there used to be competitions during gatherings of one person trying to out-speak another through the powerful stories or through his voice, their voice. Um, um, so I feel like uh, I've, I've just have that. Um, and I'm not trying to brag, it's just, it's just who I am. Um, and I realized it's, it's because of my ancestral history. Yeah, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, before that we started taping, um, storytelling is a way of teaching our values and uh, for those that are watching this show um, the values really are the foundation for our native cultures um, values such as using humor in our lives um, respecting the land respecting elders being truthful um, kind of like the ten commandments if you will for mm -hmm. the native people um, mm -hmm. of what they value and what they use to remain a strong strong native community um, but in your years of storytelling, how do you use that to help shape or how to uh, relay the values to the younger generation? When we tell a story, it's mostly for entertainment, but also for educational purposes. We try to interpret what the moral lessons are from those, um, from those old stories and telling it to young people and trying to figure out how it applies today and pulling in those, our, our Athabascan values, whether it's honesty, humor, uh, love for children, and, um, and many of the other, uh, almost all of the, our, all of our Athabascan values are integrated uh, within storytelling. <clears throat> so do you remember being told stories when you were younger? Um, not vividly, but I, I do remember a, a, um, a couple um, growing up, uh, and I just just uh, the intention behind it, 
and why I was told those stories um, from uh, from uh, family members the uh, huela uh, that's uh, uh, that passed on. So I remember when I was growing up, I grew up in a village above the Arctic Circle in a small little village called Evansville, mm. with only about 60 people up there. And I remember the elders in the community, in addition to my mom. Um, as I mentioned, you know, you observe the elders as you're growing up and you're seeing what they're doing and so you take note so you can do that like moose hide tanning or fishing or going to fish camp um, cutting the fish properly you just observe and you pick that up um, in regards to storytelling I remember people would talk about uh, you know so and so from the village went moose hunting and you know he was careful in how he cut the moose up and prepared it and brought it back and how he shares it with people in the community. Uh, one thing in our native culture is um, if you're young and you get your first fish or your first moose or anything, you share it. You give your first piece to an elder and in celebration of mm -hmm. your doing that, accomplishing that. But I remember storytelling of, you know, they'd share how the people would do certain things and how it was accomplished and that would um, just in that story, you know, it's a, it's a neat story because they'd always have really cute things, antidotes along those storylines. But in hearing that story, you're also being taught a lesson on like how to properly cut up a moose and that sort of thing. Um, you're not really aware that you're being taught a lesson, but you are being taught a lesson through storytelling. So. Um, and you talked about the values. Um, this past summer, Danakanaga did a culture camp along with the Morris Thompson Center and TCC in where our elders mentored other elders um, because in our history as native people in Alaska, unfortunately there were some generations that were taken away from their homes, even at a young age of three, four, five, six, and never returned for a long time. Um, and it was a horrible time in our history, but um, so a lot of those elders that went through that didn't learn their traditional ways or their values. Um, so we had a culture camp in which the elders that knew all these activities um, shared it and passed it on to the younger elders, if you will. So, and you were involved uh, in that culture camp. What did, what did you think of that? It was very great immersion uh, sessions because we all have a story to tell and uh, and there was a great opportunity for them to share it um, um, to learn from one another and uh, it was just powerful to just hearing the experience with uh, elders um, versus the ones that are uh, that want to be more connected in their culture um, those elders and uh, it was very it was very beautiful sessions so you were part of one of the sessions in which you talked about storytelling and shared your knowledge and along with another elder, esteemed elder in our region, mm -hmm. Miranda Wright, who knew, who talked about our native values. In that session, um, what were some of the things that were shared in that session? Miranda led with uh, going over the values and how each individual that was in the group uh, perceived those values and how they applied them in their daily living, how they understood from um, culture, how they grew up, um, uh, whether if it was back in their home village or, or outside of uh, their home village. And um, it was, it was interesting to see all of the dots connect with all of them and how we're all relatable. Uh, there's that relatability in learning those values. And, uh, and it just turned into a bunch of series of uh, sh a story sharing. Uh, a lot of us shared stories, um, both traumatic, but also um, uh, uh, joyful stories. And, um, and I just, uh, uh, we just let it uh, happen organically. It wasn't really structured. Uh, Miranda would talk about the values and how uh, those were applied and I would just talk about uh, uh, my stories and, and, and allow that safe space for others to share those stories. And uh, I feel like I really learned more from them than they learned from me. Like, and, and, and that's the way it goes. It's just, I didn't want to be the expert 
to them. I just was just wanted to create that space for them. So for you as a storyteller, mm -hmm. um, what kind of topics are you interested in and what do you share in your stories? Resiliency. I want to, <clears throat> because life can be very difficult and, uh, and we've had some traumatic experiences, but how do we overcome them? How can we move forward? And, uh, and learning the values of how we overcame the hardships of extreme cold weather of Alaska over uh, um, uh, different barriers and traumatic experiences growing up um, in the earlier uh, years of the state of Alaska. So it's, uh, it's very beautiful to, to, to overcome those challenges and, and know what one's purpose is and being a part of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know you brought a story with you uh, oh. to share. Yes. If you want to go ahead and share one of your stories. Yeah, so I love to write, um, uh, creative writing, and I am a spoken word artist. I write a lot of poems, and the poem that I've written years ago, um, shortly after my dog passed away, and, uh, and it, was, it was just an ode to him, uh, Ramon Oso. Thank you, my honey, for your love and play. Lost and angry I am now that your life came due. Carry your heart with me to face the day. My arms are empty now without your stay. <laughs> I laugh seeing the bear you used to screw. Thank you, my honey, for your love and play. Excuse me, I just got emotional and I lost track of thought of, uh, I lost track of uh, where I'm at. My thoughts of suicide you kept at bay. How can I continue on while feeling blue? <sighs> Carry your heart with me to face the day. Learn from you how to interact in the fray. Never have I connected with any till you. Thank you, my honey, for your love and play. <laughs> Authentic, honorary barks you had to say, unapologetically you, even when you had to poo. Carry your heart with me to face the day. Learn from you Learn from you taught me to love myself against the disarray. Your absolute love brought me to fullest imbue. Thank you, my honey, for your love and play. Carry your heart with me to face the day. Thank you. That was very nice. Thank you. It's, um, for our viewers and the people here in the theater, um, the generation before me, my mom's generation, she left school in the third grade because she was, back then, she was born in the uh, late 20s. She would be beaten if she spoke her language or did any of her traditional activities. And so I have a twin sister. We're the youngest in the family. And when we were growing up, Frank, um, every night after dinner, this is all before the internet and iPhones and everything else, um, she would lay down with us and read us a story and, or talk about, you know, our native ways and her, our native relatives uh, that we hadn't met on her side of the family. And we just really soaked all that in. 
But what we didn't know is uh, she was teaching herself, uh, in addition to sharing stories of her growing up, she would also read books to us. And we didn't realize at the time that she was teaching herself to read when we were young, when she was sharing those stories with us. Um, you know, we never knew that. Um, so any type of story that's told, um, you know, of years ago it was more of our native ways and our culture and how we continue to do them. And nowadays, in this day and age, you know, Frank is a young storyteller and he shares things like that story you just shared about your dog. And that really relays about the love we have as people, not mm -hmm. only for other people, but for animals as well. Mm -hmm. um, is there any other story, Frank, that uh, really stands out for you? Um, or anything on the native um, values that you, you think about? Yeah. Uh, there's an old book, um, or um, oldish book, uh, uh, about Ketakakani, the ancient traveler, um, one who travels amongst the fish and animals, uh, excuse me, travels amongst the people and animals. And in those stories, and I love this book so much, um, each chapter is, is, a, is, a, is a lesson. Um, it's not explicitly stated, but uh, you can, but knowing as uh, um, what it was, uh, um, what it was like um, to the hardships and, and, and what one has to do to live a nomadic lifestyle, living off the land in, uh, in Athabascan country long ago, before technology, uh, I can infer those lessons um, from each chapter. And uh, the ancient traveler, he travels uh, um, throughout many of Alaska, and uh, and each chapter he he comes across uh, an animal or a person, and he spends the night with them, shares a meal with them. But when in one specific chapter, called "Grandfather, I've Come to You," he did not spend the night with him, and he did not share a meal with him. And uh, in that chapter. He says, in his language, Grandfather, I've come to you. He comes across this frozen uh, uh, water area. I can't remember if it was a lake or a river, but I remember reading that it was massive, so it was probably a big lake. <clears throat> and um, he says, Grandfather, I've come to you. And that old man is just uh, fishing, ice fishing. With, he has a little hole, and he's just sitting there by himself. And every so often, he would just... Uh, um, uh, just uh, taught his line. And uh, the old man wouldn't say anything to him. Grandfather, I've come to you. Still nothing. Grandfather, I've come to you. And still nothing. And then all of a sudden, Getokani, uh, his stomach uh, got upset. And uh, he went to the bathroom over the hole. Um, and instead of the old man being empathetic or even sympathetic to him to help him out, he just said to himself, without even looking at him, without even acknowledging his presence, he just talked to himself and said, oh, so that's why there's no fish today. And then he cleaned his line and then continued fishing. And it was in that moment uh, uh, Getokani could figure out there was no point in trying to connect with him. And he just, and he moved on. So he just left and he continued on his, his journey to the next area. And inferring the, uh, uh, inter, in, interpreting the lesson from that, we've all come across difficult people. No matter how well intentioned, uh, intentioned we are, no matter uh, 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 how much we want to have that connection with somebody and, uh, and try to uh, build or salvage a relationship whether it's a personal or business relationship, there are some people who are not receptive and just learn to let go and move on. And that's, that's one of my favorite stories. Uh, um, how do we tell stories now? I mean, now we have the internet. Uh, you know, yeah. It's just so different, uh, even from my generation. Like mm -hmm. I mentioned, you know, we didn't even have television in the village when I was growing up. So, yeah. Uh, how do we continue to share our stories and teach the younger generation? Definitely. Uh, if you're in a village, 
uh, I highly re recommend going to any elder, visiting an elder during lunchtime or after lunch. Um, my favorite thing to do whenever I'm in a village, I like to visit an elder. Um, uh, one of my favorite elders that I visit in Huslia, uh, besides my grandfather, uh, I visit him and he'll give me a pop and, uh, and then he'll just tell me stories. And it's really cool. And sometimes I'll record them on, on my voice recorder um, and, uh, and write those down. Um, so it's a blend of having that human, human interaction and having that connection and just hearing the story and being mindful and being present in the moment. Um, but also uh, uh, you could uh, uh, ask them if you can record it, whether through uh, um, a smartphone or a voice recorder uh, or, or even a video camera. And uh, definitely record those. And um, there are many platforms today where uh, anybody can upload a video or a podcast, uh, or uh, a blog, or, or even a vlog, uh, a video log. And um, there's, uh, there's many uh, avenues for, for people to, to share that um, but how that do, way. How do you personally, how do you share your stories? Uh, through writing, uh, trying to get my works published, uh, sending those books out to communities, uh, connecting with, uh, uh, with uh, like-minded folks on Facebook, uh, through social media, um, building that community, sharing stories, uh, learning, trying to just doing as much research as you can to find those uh, um, projects uh, that are around and, uh, and joining them. So there's, there's, there's definitely things out there. You just got to look for it. Um, just take the initiative, do a little bit of research, whether it's online or in person um, uh, or through Zoom. So, How do we get the younger generation to get really interested in um, sharing or telling stories? Because this generation now mm -hmm. is just so fast, everything is instant. Everything know? is, yeah. And, um, you know, storytelling takes time. It does take time. And how do you what would you suggest that we do to get the younger generations involved? It's difficult because what we learned that the, the kids today have a very short attention span. Trying to find that median to get them engaged um, through social media because most of their life is through social media, unfortunately. Um, uh, but kids in the village, I would highly recommend just visiting an elder, whether it's your own grandparents, uh, aunts or uncles, or visiting someone that you've always, that you don't even, you know, like you've seen them, but you've uh, never really uh, engaged or met with them. Um, so my recommendations is just to, just to visit. Visit as much as you can. Um, it doesn't have to be an hour, it could just be a couple minutes. And, uh, and build that relationship and, and learn. Um, uh, but there's, de there's, uh, there's some um, multimedia stories online through Facebook, Instagram, other social medias, um, or uh, web websites with, uh, with uh, podcasts. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking as you were talking about, um, my mother grew up in Norvik, which is a Northwest Alaska. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's in Inupiaq community and her older sister through storytelling down to us um, they recalled when they used to have, be at war with the Indians of yep. interior Alaska mm -hmm. and when you think about it that's not too far away you know and, and you know, hasn't been that long ago but those kind of stories and I often hear you know, people say, oh, I wished I had really talked to my relatives more mm -hmm. because when they get to be a certain age, like in their 40s or so, they really start getting interested in their history and their family history and um, their culture. And, um, you know, so it's so important to really uh, to tell the younger generation to just talk to people. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting. I come across situations like uh, with with uh, kids like that all the time. Uh, that, that just wants to get out, just want to get out of the village or even Fairbanks. I want to get out of here. 
there's this this town is too small, uh, uh, small town, small mind. I, uh, nobody understands me here. When in actuality, pretty much everybody does understand them. He's just it's it's the struggle, and they're in getting over it, uh, uh, getting over the struggle, and uh, and then coming out, uh, coming out brighter on the other side, and uh, and it's interesting because um, our perspective shifts uh, from when we're uh, young all the way to, to and, and as you stated to you know uh, middle age, and it's uh, it's difficult to to really get the, the youth feel that. Because they could, yeah, I, I hear that all the time, but that doesn't mean anything to me because you're young and invincible during that time, and it's, it's difficult. But um, I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah. <laughs> so we just got to get the gen younger generation involved more and stuff. Definitely. So I really appreciate being here and just to talk about storytelling um, it seems like it's a thing that really needs to be revived a mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but do you have any other comments you'd like to share about storytelling? Yeah, I just I would encourage uh, anybody to share the story because everybody has a story to share uh, and uh, and tell. Um, whether it's poetry, whether it's short stories, whether it's an actual novel, or if it's maybe just uh, just fun stories, um, just to share um, at a dinner room table. Um, uh, for tea time or whatever, and it's uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, it uh, really uh, fills your heart, but also um, builds that connection with other people, and that is pretty much what we as human beings strive to do—to have that interconnectedness. So, and uh, uh, one comment about uh, uh, the wars. Uh, long ago, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite books uh, is Bird Girl and the Man Who Followed the Sun by uh, Velma Wallace. And in that, she talks about uh, um, some wars between Inupiaq and Athabascan peoples. And, uh, and it's very violent uh, and traumatic, but uh, um, you would have to be to, uh, to give um, uh, history the, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, justice. To, to give uh, to give the history justice on it, so and it's a uh, it's a very beautiful story, um, it, it's very uh, uh, touching but it's very sad too, but uh, uh, learning to to find all the positives in it, and that's what we as life try to do. Right. Thank you so much for being with us and as our guest today, Frank Yaska, Tan Machis Conference. We hope you've enjoyed the show. I'm Sharon McConnell. Thank you for watching.